Hello, everybody. Welcome to the five. Fuck, and I fucked that up. <laughs> Great start. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the five year anniversary of Cade Hogan's first film, uh, Thursday the 12th. And here I'm, obviously, I'm Joaquin Venegas. I starred in the movie for as the store clerk. And we are here with the uh, writer director, uh, Cade Hogan. Hello. And also starring in the movie. And I don't know if you're Hi. considered a producer on this one. Yeah. Isaac Moore. Hello, guys. Uh, Hello, Joaquin. How are we doing? Pretty good. Uh, it's five years since, uh, I guess, your first ever film. Since our made. freshman effort. Our freshman, freshman effort. effort outside of the movie that we shall not name, that me and Cade once made. Mm. Mm. Um, you made that, too. I was also there. You were there? For, I thought that was just us three, me, you, and Audrey. Nope. Isaac was also there. You were there? Wow, okay. I'm going to not. I'm going to choose not to be hurt by this. Well, we all kind of blocked this one out because that was that a rough. So that was a rough effort. That was not a good one. Yeah, this is the anniversary of it. Cade wanted to do a little special interview for it. The whole from I guess from start to finish of the whole thing what was this sophomore year Spanish class. What's eleventh grade? Junior. junior. So junior year Spanish class. Me and you had Spanish together, and because we talked so much, we uh, had to get moved across the classroom from each other. And I think even still, didn't stop us. Didn't we stop. Still we still talked, talked an enormous amount. In probably a more annoying way. Yeah, because it was across the whole class yeah. as opposed to right and next now to each we, other. Now, then we just got everybody in on the conversation yeah. all the time. And then I moved closer somehow. It's because um, she knew we were relentless. I guess just kind of start by how you got the idea because apparently I was there with you when this idea was started. You're the reason the film got written. I have no idea. So the way... It <laughs> I don't. I have, no, I have no recollection. You said this earlier and I... I no, nothing. So first of all, I wanted to... I thought it was a big thing just because of how much we've done since uh, Thursday 12th, which is why I wanted us to do this fifth, uh, yeah, I guess fifth today, anniversary thing. It, 2024? Um, yeah. It's 9-11 as recording of this interview. All right, well, I don't know. We have done... <laughs> Well, five films in total and one feature as of this date, right? <laughs> we've made five short films, one yet to be released, mm -hmm. and uh, we've made our first feature. But the story is, I was doing the bit across the classroom to you of Thursday the 12th. Oh, it's pretty funny to imagine Jason Voorhees going out, getting groceries. What's he going to do the night before? And then you just said, you should write that. And I was like, look, look huh. at me, Look at me go. Just oh. playing behind the scenes. <laughs> Pulling the like, strings. Up, yeah. I was like, okay. And then I think during that Spanish class, I wrote it in Google Docs in like janky script formatting. And then within, I bet that was close to the end of the year because then we made it that summer. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's basically how it got started because it was basically like, oh, now we've been thrust into something. And then we were talking about it and we were like, this feels like something we could really feasibly actually do it, it was easy i mean obviously i wasn't there for any of the actual production of it but it was just i guess isaac on camera the whole time mm -hmm. and then just following you around for every single scene we really helped ourselves out with the format there <laughs> we really did no lighting needed just sort of complete shot gunning it, wor it worked well though yeah. it felt it felt it helped the like chaotic nature of i guess what was going on for mr Voorhees. i mean the 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 equipment we had was just the camera with a mic hooked in it wasn't even, we didn't even have like a separate audio thing yeah. it was a whole it was truly just like the most kids in the backyard making a movie style of making a movie that we have done absolutely and i kind of miss it i think we should do another not necessarily mockumentary but something that has that same like just complete run and gun like we're just running around we're gonna die very soon well, not I like no, I people no don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, I realize that sounds <laughs> the camera crazy. battery. I was looking back on it. You wrote just for Cade. You wrote or written many scripts since then. Obviously, yeah. that being your first one, your first one that really kept putting the action. Mm -hmm. uh, what have you changed in your like process and the way you come up with ideas compared to that very first one, which was written on a, a, a damn Google Doc, compared to now, where you can literally bust out a script in probably a week if you really, really have the idea. I mean, everything for writing is different. I, I think some, some ideas you can absolutely bust out in a week and some you can't. At, at, there's never a, a time where like it's writing is going to be a consistent thing. But in terms of coming up with an idea, it's the same. It's basically the same of like, oh, I get this little strike of inspiration. Coming up with immortality was as much as I'm, I remember it very distinctly because it's a weird way I came up with it. It was I was watching Licorice Pizza on Christmas. I went to see it on Christmas Day. 
And there's this part of that movie where Cooper Hoffman's character, I think, or it's Tom Waits. It's either Cooper Hoffman or Tom Waits. They're driving a motorcycle across a golf course. And then I went, what if that was Dracula, but he was on a bicycle? And then I had the idea for immortality. But, but since then, um, the way that I write has really changed because until recently, it was just focused on that idea and what like just kind of naturally seeing where it can go without a lot of forethought. And now I plan a lot and I go based off of theme and every decision I make in my scripts is based off of what theme and how that should impact the characters and what the characters should explore through that. Is there anything from the first script that made Thursday the 12th that has carried over to how you do stuff now? Or is that way you did it then just completely just you evolved immensely from then? I mean, I don't think I evolved immensely. I think, dialogue is pretty much exactly the same dialogue i like to find on the page and then find in the moment still where we just show up on the day i was talking to justin about this i interviewed him i have a couple questions because i wanted to seem prepared uh but mostly i just wanted to talk to you about thursday the 12th because it is the fifth anniversary on this thursday the 12th um and you were a big part of making the whole movie i know at the time Why after i watched also it calling me on instagram <laughs> I'm calling you on Instagram. I remember when I first watched it and like I saw the credits, I was like, I am credited too much. Like, I don't feel like I did a lot. Like, like in my mind, you guys had that. You guys made that machine go. Um, and like that whole fucking day at the lake. Uh, I remember not being able to like uh, or like somehow containing my laugh yeah. when you dropped that fucking jelly line. You're like, yeah, he. Exploded like a goddamn bag of jelly and almost lost it, but I did was, not want to ruin that take. I truly think all of the way of like writing dialogue is the same, where I just like go in with the ideas of my characters and I might have some dialogue written beforehand, but I'm not like meticulous, like this is how this character talks, this is how this is happens. It's just whatever I find on the page. What's the question? I have to ask one, apparently. <laughs> What was she? What did she do in the movie? I don't remember. Yeah, Audrey's in the film for maybe two. I seconds. got killed really fast. Okay, so when you first started as, with, I guess being friends with Cade, could you ever imagine being in his movies and at a point now to where, you were an integral part in two of them now? To be honest, no. Like, because it was mostly like Cade being like, "Hey, could yeah. you do this?" Me and, and Cade then I would be friends. like, "Okay, sure." Because he offered me with a crowbar. In, in something that's how we became friends yeah no 100 percent. but it's more so like him giving roles to me that are like basically my personality and then i'm like okay sure like specifically like immortality like because shogun had fully said like she was like okay so this is audrey mm -hmm. in reference to the character that i had played he really seems to write characters after all his friends no 100 percent, and i love that because makes my job easier personally yeah. because i don't consider myself somebody who is good at acting you so better. if he just you're good at acting yeah. yeah so if he just makes the characters after my personality that i already have then it um you know makes my life pretty easy what was your any memories from the movies that stand out and i got killed instantly and i had a great time it was the second time that i ever met isaac ever and that was fun for me it was the first time the first movie ever made that has lost its ethos yes no actually i i no that was the second time because the third time was kickflip how did it I, it was oh. three years ago that today yeah that we, we were, made we were looking at that yeah. because i saw it on my snapchat memories it popped up yeah that how does it how does it feel going from a character who dies and is on screen for maybe two seconds to a more main character with a bunch of lines throughout the years of making everything it's really cool i also think that you guys just perhaps needed a kill and you were like ah i'm friends with audrey let's kill her <laughs> anyways thank you audrey i love <laughs> making you act thanks for making every other role just me you're super and welcome so for yeah. both of you guys for both of us a question for both of you um i guess the process of obviously Cade being the one who writes and kind of directs everything and then isaac over the years kind of just being right hand like i guess both of us with him th throughout the whole thing from that first day because i was really just you guys the whole way through to now everything we've shot how has the, has the experience changed is there anything from back then that you wish 
or that you still do or wish that you could have applied to even the things we make now or vice versa? I mean, there's the same amount of reliance on each other that we've always had and like yeah. trust in what we're doing. Cause especially back then for Thursday the 12th, there was a lot of even our now most ardent supporters back then were like, they can't fucking make a movie. So it was, it, it was a Who lot of just that? Shogun. Oh no. Crazy, right? Well, crazy. Your mom was your biggest hater. Yeah. She was like, God damn. No, his mom wasn't our biggest hater. My mom was our biggest hater. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. My mom was like, yeah, okay, sure. That's wild. It was insane. She has since and very quickly became very supportive. God, yeah. I hope so. But it was really weird that first go around where everyone was kind of like, you guys can't do this. Isaac and I really had each other's backs and had the confidence that we could craft the project and show it to people. And they'd be like, oh, you can. And I still remember the first time showing it to Shogun where she was like, holy shit. She said, play that again. Because she was so taken aback by the fact that we made something that could actually uh, be coherent and make her laugh. What were your expectations going in? Like, I, I, I think that you knew that we were semi-serious about what we were doing. But, like, did you have a real overall grasp of what me and Isaac were setting out to do with it? No. Just, <laughs> I was like, it's going to be fun. Um, I know that this is, because I feel like I had a firm grasp on, you know, all of my friends' passions mm -hmm. at that point. Um, so if they were like, yeah, I want to do this or I want to make this. I'd be like, yeah, uh, I understand where you're coming from with that. When you got a passion for your art, you're clearly setting out with a goal, but I didn't know exactly what the goal was. I figured it might be entertaining. You know, yeah. that's just the goal. Get something entertaining out there. But I also didn't know what it was opening the door for, like for especially for how early on you were in your filmmaking journey. I was like, you know, this guy, because I'd never, you know, done that before. So I was like, he he knows what he's doing. He's, he's got this figured out. I think particularly a part of our dynamic that has survived is basically the Kate is like, we should do this. And I'm like, can we do that? And he's like, I don't know. Can we do that? And then I go, I don't know. Let me think about it. I, probably, I guess. And then that, then we do it. Something I noticed about Kate is that he'll ask you, do you think it's possible? And in his head, he's already made up that it is. He more so gets someone on to co-sign with it, so no matter what, he has a hand to be with him the whole way there, whole way through. This is true. I don't think I really say no aside from stunt work, and that's because I'm your friend and I love you, and I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quickly followed by the moment of you holding a towel around me while I got stripped naked in the woods because I was soaking wet from the lake. Oh my god! And the 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 hits you took, like coming out of the lake. I don't oh. remember how many takes of that. We did. I mean, we did five or six I know you of kept, them. You kept the hardest one in the in the film. Yeah, man. I remember when you hit the ground on that one. I was like, "Shit, that's it. That's it. He's he can't." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, he's dedicated dedicated to the craft to not only go into the freezing cold water, but to come out and dislocate his shoulders." But yeah, just seeing you hit the ground like that, I was like, "Oh yeah, he's got a dedication to this that I did not know he would have when we first jumped in." But like for him to start off day one freezing cold two busted shoulders he's like fuck it let's get ready tomorrow <laughs> let's get up bright and early not only that but doing the stunt like eight or nine times when i'm pretty sure you used the second or third take like you still do that now with everything yeah we can do like 20 takes something and then it's like the first take you use i guess i don't trust that that first take is perfect if i like it i want to make sure that there's enough in case something magical happens on take fucking 12 that it'll work like if, if i'm really happy with a take i'm like let's move on but if if when i see it the first time i watch it and it's not immediately like oh yeah especially for stunts if i'm not like yep that fucking works that's mm -hmm. gonna sell that i want to do it again it's a question for isaac here since you were there the whole time like i've said before for this movie mm -hmm. i wasn't with i had to make, I had to make a movie with kate till parade float that was really our first big thing together we made. Speaking with him, is there things that you've noticed he's done that even till now, they're like, God fucking damn it, dude. God damn it in what way? We could do it two ways. God damn it into where, God damn it, that was insane. That like we, we that was crazy or impressive or God damn it is like, what you, this is insane. 
This is this is impossible. Imagine reading that as a transcript. <laughs> <laughs> I can name off my head too. From Thursday the twelfth, I think probably the biggest what the fuck moment for me is more someone else, and it was just the random like green light support we got from Scott Lloyd Scott letting Lloyd. us use Scott his Lloyd. um uh what are those Dry called cleaners? yeah laundromat laundromat yeah um because that was like a thing where Cade was like I think we could just ask him and I was like the grocery store that's yeah. another one and like he kept being like I think we can just go ask them and I was like I feel like you gotta do some paperwork or something mm-hmm. and he was like nope let's go and then he asked them and then they were like we don't fucking care it was really it was really weird <laughs> yeah because also especially with the grocery store with Scott Lloyd we had really talked to him he was like I support film blah 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 I'm excited when you guys need it with the grocery store when we got there I remember all of us being like should we go in Yeah. because there was this moment of like they really didn't give a fuck. They're like, we don't care. Come and do whatever you want. And I was so scared because that was my first ever time acting in my life. I had mm-hmm. no lines. Do you have a line? It's over there. Yeah. Okay. I was really afraid that we were going like, to get in massive trouble. And somehow oh. I have to explain, or we all have to explain, what the fuck we were doing. Yeah. Especially since I was dra- dressed up as a fucking famous uh, killer. Voorhees, yeah. Cause it's like that's not like it's not like they shut down the store or we had like five minutes. No, alone. we have a random old woman walking through the back it, of the it shot. It was it was all active. The store was going. Yeah, it was a nice little. T- I tiny love store. that little store. King's 50s. Grocery. King's King's Gro. Wow, Kings have been coming in clutch for us, haven't they? They always have. Wow. The funny part about that was I remember us being in the car and me saying I can't walk in in the full costume. I have to go in and ask and be sure. Cause it was a different manager. I remember going in and be like, hey, we came in a couple days ago. We asked if we could film here. And the guy was like, oh, he did? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay. I think it's an interesting dynamic that you two have because, Cade, you're always like, let's just, let's just, just do it. And Isaac's like, it can't be that simple. It's never that. We just ha- There has to be other things around this. And somehow every time, and it still boggles my mind. I imagine it boggles your mind, Isaac. It's just that simple every time. Sometimes it's even the point where Kate, I, Kate asks you to do crazy things, like make a whole goddamn parade float, or multiple things are the, the two unreleased things that we've made. Not usually is it that simple, but it always is possible. Yeah, like it's it's Kate's like mindset on life, and even with the whole thing, the dedication to really like just do it. We're just gonna do it. Yeah. And he drags all of us into it and we're like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Like it's, we can't just do this. Like like get they like, thank God your mom had the hookup for this for locations for us. Mm-hmm. And you just going and talking to people to get us in there. And the whole time me and Isaac would be like, What are we doing, man? This is this is like how? You get a lot done by just talking to people, I gotta say. Which I think is an important lesson. Yeah. Cause, like if you don't ask, nothing will happen. Mm-hmm. A lot of my like even outside of the films my whole career of being a video editor has come from you just got to ask and like you get a weird amount of opportunities and also a part of this is i have a lot of faith in isaac as a, a as a handyman as a producer as many things where i'm just like if i have this idea and i don't know how to execute it i can come to isaac and he will be like yeah yeah i can figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't have anything to add because that was the perfect um, mimic of what that moment is for me. It's a l- deep sigh and then a, well, I mean, yeah, I can figure that out, I guess. It, It's always like, I'll show you storyboards and you'll be like, what? You want us to do what? And then there's this moment where you you got your hand on your hip and you're looking at it. And you're just like, you always do this. <sighs> and for me, it never feels like a production until three days before I go and see everything that's going on and I see Isaac and he's just the most stressed out manic man I've ever seen and he's I'm like he's like what's up and just walks over to whatever the fuck he's doing and me and Kate are like okay then me and Kate go talk about everything I'm like what we're, we're doing what <laughs> huh and he's like yeah I was gonna do this and, that, and I'm like like you he's like I told you this I'm like when you mentioned yeah we're gonna have someone do this someone do that I do this and I'm like you never explained it the actual practicality of it and then we just then we just go do it 
with a lot of stress. He doesn't explain the actual practicality because when he gives you the idea, he doesn't fucking know yet. I don't think he knows it, till it, the moment of. Yeah. Like, thank God for Camilla because Camilla's able to put a real wrangle on it. They're like, all right, settle down there. We just, let's think practically about this. Yeah, you get everyone. It's 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 like a virus. What do you a mean? A loving virus, but uh-huh. it's just like, you're just like, you're just going to do this. Everyone's like, what, what do you mean we're just going to do this? And then... I think there's a lot to be said about my level of I don't know if it's unearned, but it, my level of confidence that I have where I just kind of walk in because I remember we in, an, in our unreleased film, there's a stunt where I jump off of a roof mm-hmm. and we, they were only allowed me to do one take of it because it was dangerous. And it was everyone on set was super fucking anxious and nervous. We had uh, an actor there for his, his first day of shooting, watching this fucking stunt oh go God, down. It was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I remember the one thing I knew was that I couldn't be scared. I had to be like, I will be fine. I know what I'm doing. We're going to get this shot. It's going to look super cool. And that uh, level of confidence what I try to bring to every decision we make. But doing that stunt, I was scared. I was jumping off of a roof. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. And I remember afterwards, I can't remember who I drove to the next location with. But I remember they, they, either I said, oh, I was scared. Or they were, were you scared? I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I scared. remember driving back with that actor to the next set for the rest of that night. And it was kind of like we were just, there was nothing really sent. I said, man, that was crazy, huh? He was like, yeah, what, what, what was going on? And I was like, I don't know. Like, Something I very much appreciated about him. I'll, we'll say his name, Jason, Jason Ortega, Jason Ortega. in our, our un- unreleased film, which you'll eventually you'll hear about. Um, I really appreciated how after that he was like, you got to be dedicated on this set. Like whenever mm-hmm. a new person would walk on. He would, they'd be like, so what's the tone here? And he'd be like, he jumped off a fucking roof. <laughs> Guys, you, you, he's throwing everything into this. You got to commit the same amount. And I really appreciated uh, Jason always saying that to people. Do you guys have any memories or just things that stand out from that whole production of Thursday the 12th? Because obviously I, I, I have, I had nothing to say about it because I wasn't yeah. there until I was, I was only there before for a snippet in the middle and after. But even from the snippet in the middle, it seemed like a, it was just going. It was just like there was no hiccups, there was no like questions asked. But from you guys, what what was that? I guess anything that stood out from that whole time period. I guess what three days? It was a week. It was a full week. I think it was a full week. I think it was Monday to Friday. I remember the first day of shooting. We drove out to a lake that we weren't quite sure, like what permission we had to get. So we were just like, we'll just go film really quick at this lake. And then I had to get fully sub- – and I remember so distinctly – I was talking with this about Justin and I checked the script. He was bringing up how there's that part where I improved The guy exploded like a goddamn sack of jelly. And it was this moment – this was the moment where I realized what we were doing was going to affect people because Isaac and Justin both turned away. And immediately I was like, oh, we're making something special. And then I had to go jump in a lake and then strip naked in those <laughs> woods to get out of this cold fucking clothes. They wouldn't drip all over our car. But that's a day that I will always really re- remember because it was a, it was our interesting like first shoot day. We'd never filmed anything before. I, I, I still kicked myself. I, was, I wasn't able to get there. I, I should have just like called out. Say I can't make it. J- just like, you know, like looking back on it. Yeah. You know, to be fair, I think it. Well, obviously it was a different time and I I can speak for myself at least in that all of that kind of um, uncertainty that we were doing from like especially all the adults in our lives. I know I also felt that way where I was like, yeah, we're doing this and it's going to be fun and like it's super cool and awesome and I'm so excited to be a part of it. But like it's not. It wasn't yet something that I'd be willing to, like, stick my neck out on a limb for. The thing about that is I I did have that confidence for some reason going into Thursday the 12th. I didn't really know what it was, but I had an idea that we could do it. And I, I think the other big thing is, and maybe you can tell just from watching it, but we're 17 when we made that. Like, we are, we are, we're kids making that movie. And it's a weird moment of, like... I don't, I don't even know, just like being able to branch out of something and experience what is like, what has become like my favorite thing in the world for the first time ever. Cause I also, there's also like another one of my favorite memories is everything about it was ramshackle. 
in- including our fate my favorite scene so one of my favorite things we've ever filmed which is the driving scene of thursday the 12th which was done by me beforehand i i actually memorized my lines believe it or not for this film i feel like we're bad at that now actually we, we, we get better on the day we you memorize all them. the lines because you've written the movie four times i do have them in my head pretty well but what we i play jason and freddie in that film and freddie's just over the phone but the way that we did that is jake who was a small boy we as i drove at night without my glasses on in a jason Voorhees mask he was wedged in the passenger seat holding my phone at full volume and ev- i had each freddy line in different clips so he could play it so i would say my lines as jason he'd play it and then i'd be like okay it'd be playing i would not be listening I'm like what's my next line <laughs> and then i would have to say it immediately i don't even know how many times we did that but i love the way that that turned out and then we get still that shot of you looking back at the cameras. Yeah. It's so, so funny. So goddamn funny. As, with Isaac as uh, Mr. Michael Myers. So true. There's nothing to really say about it. All I did was breathe. Yeah, but it's it was, good it was breathing. A good breath. It was I a know. very good breath. I, I, I really laid it on thick. I That maybe still is one of my best line deliveries. Absolutely. I'm just, I don't, that guy's fucking weird. Yeah. That was, uh, I won't lie. It's the only time, other than when you took that really bad bump at the beach or at the lake, um, that I was like, I'm a little afraid. I'm just slightly <laughs> afraid. He's blind. He has a mask that he has, for the last two days, told us with, to no end, he can't fucking see out of. <laughs> he cannot see out of it under any circumstance. I look back at it like it was it was absurdly funny. Yeah. It was like, we've put you behind the wheel. You definitely can't see. And we have our smallest and possibly frailest friend <laughs> like crunched <laughs> down in. and tucked into the front area. Like he's in the most danger. He should be the most yeah. scared. I don't know why, but there's something particularly, it's not so much a story, but something that I always thought was like very, I guess, symbolic of the whole experience is that really crappy plastic hand with the watch on it. Uh-huh. I don't know. I just think it's so, like, cute, for lack of a better word. It's so, like... Like, going back to the thing you just said about how, like, we're kids and we're really just sort of, like, doing it. There's very little planning, very little... It's all just shotgun. There's no rehearsal. Definitely none there of that. There's never been. Is there anything looking back on that film or a short, a short film that you would want to change? No. Okay, with that answer, do you think it's your most spotless work you've made to date? No, the, I think our most spotless work is Immortality. I think Immortality is is a really impressive for what is okay, what what's, we did. what's the difference in your eyes, outside of being your first one? Well, what's the difference between that and Immortality? Well, for it's both, not, both it's not even that. that it's a difference. It's just that I wouldn't want to change a single thing about uh, Thursday the 12th. Because it's so indicative of our beginning, like it's it's a it's a moment to look back and be like, look at where we started, look at how we made this, look at how we were able to string all these things together and create a real a a a piece of art that is was liked. Like people would watch it and laugh, and that mm-hmm. felt so good. And learning about that, like how much I loved that feeling of getting an audience to laugh from making it the way that we did, I think is. It's something that'll never leave me. I mean, same answer. I wouldn't change anything. I think that we've talked about a little bit, but not necessarily in very serious terms of having a sequel. Cause I, was that Saturday I, the 14th? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just because I think our craft has maybe increased and developed. I, I do think that there's something very pure about the way that Thursday the 12th is made. And so I don't think it would be worth it to tr- like retread that round in a um, direct way. I had a better way to say that, but then I, I have also, we have talked about that a good couple times making a sequel to it. And I, I do, I do agree. I think it would be interesting to see. Um, but the, there, it is a weird, like I, I agree. There's, there's something so wholesome about the way that it was made. Yeah that making it now like we we still bring that energy and excitement to to a project but it's very different in terms of how that was made 
in what what would be brought to it now i think i imagine it would because i know it does for me does this movie have a, a place in your heart that you think it's 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 just one and only like nothing else can ever be compared to that like oh. it's one spot it's that movie and nothing else will get near that absolutely that's why i wanted to do this interview thing because it it i wanted us to look back and be like because there, there's never going to be a point in time where like i i personally think there's never going to be a point in time where anyone's going to be like oh let's look back at thursday the 12th as like a as like a retrospective thing about like a, like an alamo draft house no one's gonna be like let's watch this um but i felt like it's really important for us to look back and be able to reflect upon our own growth and our own beginning because i i think it's super exciting especially where we've grown and what we've become since that it's just cool to get to look back and see what this movie is i think also success for lack of a better word of thursday 12th this kind of isn't at all answering the question but whatever um really laid the groundwork and the path for our output afterwards because like what you were saying about that confidence being maybe unearned or whatever I think almost instantly your confidence was rewarded with the response we got from Thursday the 12th Mm -hmm. and I mean we have low-key crazy output (laughs) Like more than a more than one project a year, yeah. which I don't think is a common thing. Mm-hmm. For me, a real insane thing was all my friends, like from middle school, the, my my first friends, that they had no idea I was doing this. Like, I think I mentioned it in passing. Like I, I've done with multiple things. But I remember the first time I showed them, they were. I remember them laughing, and I was like, "That's so weird." I, mean, I didn't think this would be funny to them, but knowing it was, they found it funny. And it was impressive was the weirdest thing i was like wow i only know I, I had a small part in it right but even them laughing at like my little moment so i was like that's my boy right there yeah, yeah. even on to like our our unreleased feature when we had that that screening for everybody seeing all my friends there and my family and having them laugh was just so weird mm-hmm. and like just going from like that moment to where like i was 15 sitting in my friend's uh bonus room showing it on my phone to them to like where we are now, five years later, or I guess four years later at that point, and we showed on a, a big screen to everybody, and it was just like everyone was laughing and enjoying it. And after we like everyone shook our hands and all that, I was like, man, wait, what? Because it was just like all it was like it felt like like that. It yeah. felt like just yesterday we were making Thursday at twelve, or we had that moment to make Thursday at twelve. We were just talking about it and got in Spanish class apparently. To now, to where we had that whole premiere. We have multiple things in the works still, things that we're still shooting for for ten years from now. And it was like it was all it was just that day we walked in that grocery store and we're just like, yeah, let's bust it out real quick. No one freak out that we're in a live grocery store right now with a machete, with 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 a weapon, a bloody machete. Bloody machete. <laughs> it was it was a tr- it's a truly incredible and I think very special experience that I will I will never forget. Especially I think particularly because we got to be really rewarded by getting into a film festival for for this one. Yeah. Because I remember... That was my next question. The film festival? Yeah. We can, yeah, you got that. Okay. I remember uh, we got into the Johnson City Film Festival, and about a month before we got to go, it was my grandparents' anniversary, their 50th and wedding anniversary. My mom said, let's show this to the family, because we didn't really know what to do while we were waiting for the food. And it was the worst viewing experience of my entire life, because it was pin drop silent. None of the jokes landed. And I remember thinking fuck we have to go to a film festival and show this in front of strangers and then the day came we were there we were in a bar oh, we'll, 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 okay we'll, we'll build up to that we'll build up to that we'll build up to all we're, that we're, okay. we're really spoiling the pie here what's going on i well that would felt like the next step in well i was like there's, there's moments before that that we all had that we you know are, are we gonna talk about our own personal trip to that and know what that meant mm-hmm. because i mean like, like i was saying like we had this whole, you know, premiere premiere for our unreleased film and all that, but that was our first real thing. We haven't yeah. done a film festival since, and it'll be hard to beat that one for us because that was like, like the first one, and it went so well as we we're going to get into. I, I remember doing this, and I felt like I was in the big leagues. I was like, dude, we're going to like a film because in my mind, I thought we're going to like fucking like Tribeca. That's like that's what it feels like to me. I don't, I don't know where John City is. I don't know in fucking a place that existed, but to me, it's like this is it. We're going we're going to get Warner Brothers next week. Mm-hmm. I was ready, and then I remember that whole trip was great. 
driving up there. That was a fantastic trip. So nauseous in that backseat through the mountains. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I actually recently went up to Boone. And I went past the exact spot on the road where we all went out in the middle of the night and went pee on the side of the road on that <laughs> hill. I went right we past it. We had to it. pee bad. But it was so it was crazy. I was like, we we I was I was there. Mm-hmm. Right there. It was a crazy feeling. I guess what you were about to get into before we even got to the film festival, and you're saying that you that doubt. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe like they were this is gonna be bad. Did that was that was that there? Did you did you like compartmentalize that and put it away? Or was that fi- were you have like massive anxiety over that the whole time you like because obviously in the moment of it was going to appear but leading up to that for both of you i guess was that anxiety still something you were battling it was definitely in me uh less so until we got i i until we got to the actual place it was going to be screen i did not realize how anxious i was in my mind i was like oh this will be fun i'll be fine blah 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 and then we were there and I just, I felt a pain in my chest and a, and my stomach drop because like the screen was big and I we were some of the earliest people there, but then that place really fucking filled up. Like it got, it was, people were standing, there wasn't enough seating room, I remember. And we were sat like the very front. We were sat at the very front and like, it felt like every eye was on us in the whole place. And I remember that ours was at the end of the first block of mm-hmm. so films. We had to wait. And the, uh, to be frank, a lot of the films did not get a, a, a very warm response or uh, the audience wasn't very, like, reactive. There was that one fantasy one that people liked a lot. And that scared me because that one looked really good. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, it was a real, like, oh, my God, how are people going to react to this? Because it's going from, like, I think we were right after that one, that fantasy one. Yeah, we were one that, that looked very high budget. Very had, like, high real budget. Stunt and then work. it was just, like, handheld. And I was like, oh, no. And I remember thinking about the anniversary and like how hard it bombed. I was like, this is going to be the worst fucking experience of my life. And then they erupted in laughter at every jo- every fucking joke hit. And I remember a weight was lifted from my shoulders. I was like, holy shit, they like it. And then I remember at the end of all the screenings, they said, we have some of the filmmakers here. Why don't you come up? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Do I have to? <laughs> and then I, we have this fantastic picture of me where I look like I've, I'm, I, I look like someone who's never stood before. Yeah. And I'm just like this. Like, my body language is the most awkward it can be. And so many people came up to us afterwards. They're like, how old are you? A lot of people give you, like, like hey, you reach out to me sometimes. Yeah. Like, if you want it was really anything. cool. Something that sticks out for me in that moment was because everything was happening so fast, like the day of. But then we got there and we're like, oh my fucking God, this is crazy. But I remember we all had a moment where we were kind of like together and we went, we were all kind of together. Like, well, whatever, whatever happens, we're going to be, like, we're doing it together. Who knows what's going to happen? This could be great. It could be terrible. But like, it's us. Like, whatever happens, we're like together. Mm-hmm. And that sticks out to me because I'm like, that's just so like, yeah. no matter what, it's like that, that moment. Yeah, that's what friendship is. Yeah. And it's just, Power it's. Power of love. I just remember that it, like, it really sticks out to me because it's like I haven't had that before with anything. Like, I, I played sports games and big games and all that kind of stuff, but no, like two like close to my my closest friends. Mm-hmm. And a moment of just like so much fear and the unknowing, and we're just like, let's see what happens. Because I remember you were freaking out. Yeah, I was scared shitless, and but I was trying to keep it cool because like I, I we can't all be freaking out. Somehow you were the most calm. Well, here's here's what happened. You were you you were cold as ice. You know what's absolutely crazy. Which, this is so ironic because I'm so anxious all the time about everything. I had the opposite experience that Cade did where it bombed when you showed it at the anniversary because right before we went to Johnson City, I had shown it to, I think, my whole family. I think everyone came over to my parents' house. It was the exact opposite. I was, I got my nerves out then Mm -hmm. because i was worried it was gonna bomb and like instead it was laughter at every joke it was like these giant proud grins and i think that going directly into johnson city like basically right after that just a couple days after that i think made me feel like you know what guys we're fine like Mm -hmm. it's good I remember after when we got out, I think we got in the car to yeah. go to Moe's to eat lunch or eat dinner. Dinner. 
and Cade had like a full seizure of just all the stress just yeah i i still ex- ex- exiting your body somehow it it was like i was vibrating on a different frequency i remember you were sitting in the back seat and your legs were on top shaking and you went i don't know what's <laughs> happening getting that film festival experience and even all that stress it was truly incredible and i do think that that's what really lit the fuse under us to have made as much as we have since because what what's interesting is we haven't done a festival since then which is crazy to me we haven't submitted to a ton i've suggested I've suggested it for, I think, everything, I think maybe everything we've made since, but it just never really happened. Yeah. We could, I think we submitted immortality to a lot of them, we'd get into most. Well, the big thing is, when we make something, my first instinct isn't, what's the festival acclaim we can get with this? Because if we do that, we can't publish it. Like, it can't be a public thing. And my first instinct is, I want people to be able to see this. What feels better to me is getting that, like, holy shit, I just saw this thing you guys made. It was really cool. Like, just from people. Like, that's what... Because it's art that's meant to be shared. It's not art that's meant to be private. Mm-hmm. And I, w- I would wish that more film festivals allowed for films that are public to be submitted. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand that they want to have the premiere, but I feel like it's different for, sh- especially for short films, like a feature film I get, like you want to, you want to lock down the exclusive rights that you want to have the premiere of a, of a feature at your festival. But when you're making a short, even if it's, if it's from someone who's super acclaimed, like Jim Cummings, like I don't see the point of holding it away from people for longer because you're proud of your work and you want people to be able to see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of already asked this question already, but is looking back on it on that first thing and to where whatever is going to happen in the future you never know right what is one thing from that first movie that you want to keep with you for however long this however long this goes for your photo in your wallet that you always look at like what is that one thing for me it is that idea that it's possible a lot of people even filmmakers like Spielberg or Ang Lee or Shyamalan they talk about how Back when they were in school or back when they were young, you had to go to film school just to get the equipment. And now you have a a camera in your pocket and it's this effect of like, oh, you you do. You do. People hear that and they're like, yeah, but I'm not fucking M. Night Shyamalan. I'm not freaking Spike Lee. I I can't do this. You can be. You can. You you can't. Well, you can't be them. But you can can, can be you can be someone that level. Yeah. Just do it. You just have to. There's there's the always that trepidation within you of like. Oh, they're saying this, but they know how to do it. They've been doing it for so long. But you can learn. Like, and the, you're never, you don't come out the gate fully formed unless you're David Lynch making a racer head, in which case people are like, what the fuck is this? And he's like, I know, right? Um, you say that Thursday the 12th. What the fuck was that? Everyone's like, I don't know. It was great. But it, I still feel like it really fits into this bucket of Thursday the 12th being our, our first draft of particularly my voice as a writer and director. It, it, it shows where, like, clearly what's going to be built upon and what is going to come next but isn't in and of itself, like, an opus of any sort. And I think that the biggest thing to take away from that is, like, the idea that you can set out and you can make something in your backyard and it can be seen as a, as a huge success. That's kind of basically what I was going to say. I also do think the corniest answer is also a very true answer, which is love no genuinely i think love for what you're doing uh, it exceeds all of all other motivating factors mm-hmm. more than anything else if you love what you're doing you love the people you're doing it with it, it's almost impossible to fail because even if you're failing by everyone else's standards you've already succeeded in that you got to make that thing with those people and so I think that sets you up for success directly from jump to go in with love. Uh, the one thing I'll take away is just, I'm going to just ride on Kate's coattails till the very end. That's what I'm going to do until he doesn't want me there. No, but, but seriously, I think it's just just doing it. I mean, because like, I never thought I would do this in my life, make a movie or whatever, and have the chance to become something that I can make whatever out of this, right? But I think it's more just be like, just take every opportunity for me. Cause you know, there's been times where I'm like, 
I don't know if I can do this, that, whatever. And I'm like, fuck, I'm just going to do it. And it turns out great. So I think that's the biggest thing for me is just like, just, just keep, just keep going. Oh my God. You said coattails. Coattails. Yeah. That's so funny. (laughs) Well, I got something to say. Okay. Because I, I'm very appreciative and I just want this to be in a place where it's recorded for people to see. I'm so appreciative of, of both of you, of Audrey, of anyone who has helped us make these movies over the years because it's late nights. It's a lot of passion. It's hard work. It's getting paid in up one pizza at the end of the week. It's it's really good pizza. Though. It's a lot of like, as you said, Isaac, love. And I, I'm, I'm eternally so grateful that people care enough to spend their time doing that. And spending time creating a thing that was in my head and my words and listening to me because of how, like, specific, like, I act in life. Like, it's such a different dynamic we have on set. And it just means the world to me that people care enough and are always excited to embark on each new film and will sometimes be like, I am missing doing that. And it just means so much to me. (laughs) <laughs> there was a thumbs up emoji on your face what is that what, <laughs> what are you doing but it just it means the world to me that I've had both of you and I've had your support and I've had your ability in all of these projects and just like it it has made me so happy to be able to do all of this and share it with people and I we would never have that and I don't, we'd never have that feeling. We'd all still very much appreciate and love each other. But like that speci- that's, there's such a specific emotion tied to that for me that we would never have without Thursday the 12th. And that's why I think it will always be a very special movie to me. Yeah. For me, this is definitely some of the coolest stuff I'll probably ever do the rest of my life. Like that, no, no doubt about it. So I appreciate it for asking me, asking if you, I, if you hit me with a crowbar. <laughs> that's really kind of how this whole journey started. It is. And then from Isaac, from the jump being there. You were stuck. You didn't get to. Yeah. You really didn't get a choice. I do think we've been best friends a long time. But I think even for me and you, that was kind of like our our first near interactions were around this. Absolutely, it was a weird thing. I think that happened with me and you, where like you were this new guy. I didn't go to y'all school. I thought I was your replacement, and I felt so scared you were gonna hate me. And I feel like this was kind of like the final like we had already met we had hung out a bunch at this point Mm -hmm. but i I do think thursday the 12th was a very big like um it like forged bonds i I think that's what everything we've made as well absolutely everything we've made is is somehow we achieve new levels of and i say it's more than friendship at this point i but not every single one that i agree it's like i'm afraid it's gonna happen fucking five years we're gonna just merge as one being yeah, I it, that's sort of what I was trying to say a minute ago with my whole love thing. I I think um, there's just a, a special kind of bond created every time we make something and deepened every time we create something. I, it just kind of goes beyond words. I don't have the words for it. I agree. I concur. Beautiful. Uh, go watch Thursday the 12th. Go watch all Thursday the 12th. Go watch them all. Uh, Mortality, uh, Parade Float. Uh, wrong address. Wrong address. Some fight about wrong address. It was written before Parade Float. Yeah, yeah, it was. And then it was made after. And then when the un- when the new things come out that are going to be great. October, please. we have a new short film coming out called Meeting Mary. Please go watch it. I hope that will be exciting. It's about Bloody Mary uh, being brought on a first date. Uh, so Starring all of... No, not I guess you're not... Isaac had a lot of other jobs he Isaac, had to do. It was starring me, Kate, Audrey... And our dear friend was uh, Emma. Emma. Crazy. Uh, and then Isaac was the entire backbone of that thing. That it wouldn't, it could not have been done without Isaac. Yeah, I, I want to make that very clear. You had to build an entire there's, set. There's, there's, a, there's a set you're gonna see that looks it's like it's real life it's that Isaac put. When I was talking about earlier about I, it's not a movie unless I see Isaac in a total manic state. It's <laughs> that just happened. Yeah. So please go watch that. Um, when it's out, I guess like and subscribe to the Cade Cinema. Page, I guess what's this is what's going to be on. I don't give a shit what you do. You I, just I'll, watch the movies. I don't care if you're here. Just, just, just come like back for the next one. Like, yeah, like so you can do that by hitting that notification bell. <laughs> <laughs>